hello students today i discuss about a topic in functional analysis so this is hamel basis and uh, the topic name hamel basis so what is the definition of hamel basis first i um, discuss about the definition of hamel basis so in a linear space, uh, space in v if we take a subset s of the linear space V. Uh, so when we call the subset S of the linear space um, V um, a, a um, Hamel basis or a basis for V if uh, the subset S is fully linear, linearly independent. First condition is that S must be a linearly independent uh, set, uh, subset of V. And second, that S have to has to span um, V or V is equal to span S. If these two conditions is satisfied are satisfied, then uh, we say that the subset S uh, uh, is a Hamel basis for the um, linear space V. Now, a important theorem about Hamel basis. Uh, <coughs> Uh, that uh, every linear space V, every for any linear space V, it must have, uh, if uh, V is not equal to a null set, V must have at least one element uh, other than null, uh, has, at, uh, <coughs> has a Hamel basis. Every linear space must have a, uh, uh, not, uh, if uh, any, every linear space not equal to null space, has a Hamel basis. So this is the theorem. We have to prove this. So how we, we can prove this? Let M be the set of all uh, <coughs> linearly independent uh, <coughs> subsets of V, M be the collection of all the sets of lin uh, all the linearly independent sets, uh, subsets of V. So since V not equal to null set, we have assumed the first. So uh, it has uh, an element X not equal to null. But, uh, it means that V must have an element other than null element. So uh, and x ma uh, must belong to the m because m is the collection of all the subsets of v so uh, x must belong to one of the m any in any uh, yeah, yeah, in any m belongs to m so m also the collection must not uh, must uh, ca cannot be null set so we have to uh, mark that since the M is a um, collection of all the subsets from the um, linearly independent subset of V, so there must uh, um, work a set in inclusion, um, partially ordering set inclusion. You can say subset, uh, su uh, subset uh, in this uh, set inclusion uh, works in M. So here, this is an important point, very important point, that uh, subset uh, set inclusion works under M. Now, uh, we take further that uh, C is the collection of all um, <coughs> uh, a M I's. M I's means uh, um, that uh, all the linear universe subsets belong to the uh, uh, C. I, I mean to say M uh, <coughs> uh, uh, we, if we mark the all the linear independent subsets as MI then C is a collection of all MIs. Uh, this can be A, 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 C is the arbitrary chain in M. Arbitrary chain means that uh, M is um, can be 
all the collection of linear universe uh, sets uh, uh, as an arbitrary chain belongs to the C. So we now prove that C has an upper bound. How we can say that C has an upper bound? How can we prove this? So we are taking that M is the upper bound. I am just assuming that M is the upper bound and uh, M is equal to union of MI. So MI is uh, actually uh, are taken from M. Uh, <coughs> this is uh, uh, M, uh, which is a set of all linear independent, independent subset of V. So here I have already said that uh, subset set uh, inclusion will uh, work uh, under M. So if we take far, further to prove that the C has an upper bound uh, which is equal to M, we have to assume uh, union of MI. This M and this M is different. This is the upper bound M. So uh, let uh, XI uh, uh, where I belongs, I uh, works from 1 to uh, N, be an arbitrary a finite sequence of vectors in M. In M. Then, uh, <coughs> if we uh, take arbitrary finite sequence of subset in M, in M, if X, uh, XI belong, then for some M, uh, MJ, I mean to say from some MJ, uh, it, it must be a subset of MJ for some J because uh, AM is the collection of all the subset, linear universe subset of um, V. So, and this is uh, the arbitrary finite sequence of the vectors in M. So XI for some MJ, uh, it may be J, may be any, uh, any a maximum. Uh, if we find out, if we go uh, M1, M2, M3, for some, for some J, it must be a subset of MJ. So uh, since uh, MJ are all, belongs to M, which is a linearly independent subsets of V. So, XI, the finite arbitrary sequence of vectors, must be linearly independent because it is a subset of XJ. Uh, all uh, subset of a linearly independent uh, set must be linearly independent. So, it must be independent. So, this must belong to uh, <coughs> This must belong. Uh, this must belong to. Uh, this, this is the linear independent set. So this must belong to M. So it means that C has an upper bound because uh, it is a linear independent set. Means uh, M uh, M is the collection of all the linear independent subset. So this uh, sequence must belong to M. So M belongs to M. <coughs> must belong to uh, uh, this M collection of all the linear independent subsets. And what is the M? M is the upper bound. So if we recall the uh, John's lemma, uh, under the set inclusion subset, uh, the totally uh, uh, totally pair, pair, uh, totally <coughs> paired subsets uh, have a uh, has an upper bound which is M. So this John's lemma satisfied and we must have a maximal uh, element in this chain, arbitrary chain C. What is uh, we have said C. So this has a maximal element. So we can take a maximal element and in C say S. So S must be the linearly independent set because C is, uh, C is taken uh, as all the um, linear independent subsets from M. So S must be linear independent. So we have to now just prove that uh, is, uh, S is span V. 
if we prove this then we have that uh, we can prove that ml base is, this is the ml basis and every um, in a in a, uh, in, in a linear space not equal to null uh, must have a ml basis so we have to just prove that if this is a linear independent set i have already said just it is span v so if uh, we first assume that uh, span a is not uh, not equal to v means uh, uh, just is assuming a contradicting part that span is not um, uh, s is not spanning v then some element z must belong to v complement span s if it is true then we can say that <coughs> Yes, union J is a linear independent set because then <coughs> because. <coughs> So, S union Z, uh, Z is a different element uh, other than uh, which is not in S, uh, must be a linear independent set or V containing S properly. So, then the Z and S uh, uh, all together uh, span uh, V. But uh, v, uh, um, S union Z belongs to M also because uh, S union Z is a linearly independent set so, uh, and all the linear independent set belongs to M but uh, S subset of uh, S union Z S subset of S union Z but we have already proved by John Slema that S is the maximal element and there is not any uh, element um, which is uh, <coughs> maximum uh, from S. There is there does not exist. But here we are pro proving that um, there is another maximal element S union Z. So it contradicting that um, S is the maximal my ele ma maximal element. So it cannot be true. So yeah, it it can be true that um, S must 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 is small V. Then. Uh, uh, Mm, then we have already uh, we have uh, we pro, uh, we can uh, we can come to a point that um, span s is equal to v means s has to span v otherwise um, the contracting part uh, con uh, uh, comes so uh, <coughs> we can say that s is the linearly independent set uh, and also s span the v so s must be the hamel basis so at last we can conclude that um, <coughs> uh, that uh, all the linear space uh, which is not equal to null must have a Hamel basis so this is our theorem so if you like this uh, this theorem then like share with your friends and uh, uh, search and go to my youtube